Which research methods help us learn the most? Jacob Nielsen answers this question in his London keynote address. Well, I would say that there are two different things to be said about that. So the first is that um, the bigger the study you do, the more users you have, the more you will, you will learn. But there is a severely diminishing returns curve. So it's, you really do learn more with three users. I mean, per user, you learn more with three users than you do with 100 users. Now, you learn more with 100 than with three, but not 33 times more. So that's why your return on investment goes down and down and down the more people you have. And um, so the, the ideal is really that you test with just a very small number of users, then you change the design really rapidly, and then you test again. And so let's say that you actually have the budget for 100 users, which would be very happy. Um, in that case, you should, you should actually go through 33 iterations of your design, because it has never yet been found that somebody arrived at the perfect user interface that could not be better. And so every time you do another round of iteration, you know, it's going to be get better and better and better. So you can just climb, 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 and get better and better and better, and no end to that. Whereas test more and more users, and you're just going to see the same thing again and again. And it's going to be so boring, <laughs> which is a pragmatic issue, actually, because the people in the back of the room are soon not going to be in the back of the room. They discover they have important things back in the office. So anyway, so yes, I would basically recommend uh, smaller studies, but more of them.